Hey guys, it's Dr. Seamus from DrSeamus.com. And in this video, I wanna break down SIBO. And so this is an acronym that stands for Small Intestine Bacterial Overgrowth. And as its name implies, this is where the commensal bacteria or the good bacteria in the body really focus and live and thrive in the small intestine. And so we know that most of the bacteria should be in the colon, but there are times when it can backtrack or just really concentrate in different areas, in this case, the small intestine. So let's uh, start off by talking about some of the major causes of SIBO. And so right off the bat, we have dysmotility, or really, uh, and this can come on with aging, where there's not a proper motion through the GI tract, the peristaltic wave, they call it the migrating motor complex, is not working up to par. And so there can be some stagnancy there in the gut, and this can be a big problem and contributor to SIBO can also come on from immunosuppressant medications and also proton pump inhibitors uh, in conditions where there's pancreatitis or diabetes, um, even problems with the ileocecal valve where that can be open and leading a backtrack of uh, the colon bacteria into the small intestine, as well as things like strictures and adhesions and fistulas of the small intestine. This can really come on after abdominal surgeries, things of that nature. So those are some of the major causes, but let's talk about some of the symptoms here. And so if you're someone who has SIBO, what can you expect? What actually manifests in the body if you have SIBO? And so I'd say one of the biggest things is going to be bloating. And you'll notice this, especially after meals, you just kind of balloon out and start to distend. There can be an associated flatulence with that. Um, there can be just overall abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, again, the flatulence, even food sensitivities can be a big one with this as well. Fatigue. We can also see things like mood issues and apathy and depression or even malabsorption issues. And this can be big with iron when it comes to iron leading to an iron deficiency anemia. Also skin manifestations and rosacea especially as well as headaches. So these are a lot of the symptoms that can accompany uh, SIBO diagnosis. And for patients I see with this, I like to order a small intestine bacterial overgrowth test from Genova. This is a two or three hour test that takes a look at levels of hydrogen and methane through a breath test. And uh, it's interesting in that a lot of the hydrogen producing bacteria are related to patients who are experiencing diarrhea and the methane for constipation. And so this can be a great test to assess where levels are in the body and really how to target uh, as far as a therapeutic program, what we need to put in place to bring those levels of extra bacteria down in the small intestine. And this can look like uh, maybe a low FODMAP diet, a GAPS diet, or a specific carbohydrate diet, or certain things where we reduce the fermentation burden in the gut. And then this test can be so helpful to allow us to figure out what are the best supplements for you to get on to help clear out some of those excessive bacteria uh, burdens in the small intestine. So guys, this has been Dr. Seamus. I hope you gained some more insights as to what SIBO is and a program and a test that can be implemented to help bring down some of those levels and eradicate a lot of the symptoms that can be associated.